Hey guys, check this out. <laughs> Look who joined us today. It's Taco. Hey Taco. What are you doing, buddy? Hmm? Well guys, it's not quite morning time. It's actually three hours to sunset and I'm almost ready to go out again. But I did end up stacking my data. Is that a plane? <laughs> Do you hear it? And while we're at it, I put my mic right here. Does that look weird? I don't know. Well guys, it's not quite morning. It's actually three hours to sunset. And I'm almost ready to go out and go shooting again to get even more data. I did stack my HA data from last night. And remember, I got an hour of HA. This is kind of how it looked. I was actually amazed to see how much detail was there. I know the area that is around the Christmas tree cluster and actually the Christmas tree itself is super faint. I know this because last year I tried to take a photo of it, but the thing is, is I used 10 minute subs. I exposed for an hour just to see what I would get and barely any of it came out. It is super faint in there. So for me to have gotten all that and everything else that is around the Christmas tree is, uh, is really, really amazing. There is just so much information I got in just one hour. The only thing is, since it's a camera lens, I am getting still a little bit of coma in the edges, but it really doesn't bother me. It's only if I'm looking super close at it. I mean, if I were to just look at this photo and just appreciate it wide field, I think I'd just be fine with it. It's not until I go pixel peeping and I'm not really a pixel peeper, but I know some people are, so maybe this lens combination and also this camera might not be for those kind of people. But for me who wants to image and monochrome and save time doing so and get as much signal as possible, this is actually a viable option for me and I love it. And check out the data on the Rosette Nebula and also just the uh, faint trails that lead up to the Rosette Nebula. I, th I think I can get a really good photo. So tonight what I'm gonna do is get an hour in O3 and an hour in S2 and just kind of see what I get in full Hubble palette. I'll probably channel map this in HSO. I think you guys know by now that I really like the HSO color palette, but I'm really excited to go out and get the other, you know, colors. So yeah, I guess that's all we need to do. Right? That's all we need to do? Yeah, I think that's all we need to do. All right, guys, get this. It's six o'clock at night and it is sunset. All throughout fall, all throughout winter, I haven't been able to take advantage of early nightfall until right now, February. <laughs> I'm gonna get set up. Uh, my plan is to shoot O3 first. Uh, because the moon isn't coming up coming up till later and That way I don't have a lot of light pollution because by the time I get to my s2 uh, Monoceros is probably gonna be over here and then if I got enough time I'll start to shoot it shoot things over again. So I'll get more data on HA and then move on to o3 and then move on to s2 again. So I'm gonna get as much data as possible tonight I'm really impressed with that one hour I got. Uh, hopefully the O3 turns out pretty cool because I want a, I want a blue rosette nebula. But cool, I'm gonna get set up before uh, sundown. Right, I'm definitely taking flats tonight. Check out this behind me. You see that sky gradient right here? <laughs> it actually goes all the way up, almost to the meridian. So I'll be 
definitely taking some flats and my O3, my first O3 sub just came in and it's looking fantastic. Oh, imaging is underway. It's seven o'clock. So I got everything set up and ready to go by in an hour. So thankful for that. You know, it's never a good sign when you got to start the car right when you start imaging. <laughs> It's supposed to get down to 23 degrees tonight. It's 32 right now. It dropped from 48 to 32 and it's about to it's it's supposed to get to 32 or 23. See my brain's frozen right now. I'm just getting back my um first subs of 03 and they're looking really good. I'm just going to try and stay warm tonight. I don't know how long I'm going to be out here, but I'm definitely going to try and take advantage of things. But uh ooh. Oh, God, God, God. Check this out. I got ice forming on stuff. Look at that sparkle right now. <laughs> it's all over my tripods and everything. You know, I got to tell you, those of you that have been able to shoot all winter long, I envy you. Being up under the winter sky right now is a really big treat for me after the fall and winter I've had. I can see Orion, uh, Monoceros up here, the Pleiades, and then I got the Big Dipper all like hanging out in like a weird, weird orientation. It just looks really cool. I don't know. You guys uh, that have been shooting all winter long have been really lucky. All right, I'm kind of looking over my data right now and it is looking really, really good. Uh, got really strong O3. I'm on S2 right now and even that's super strong. I really love this lens. It it's just brings in so much signal at once. It's, 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 it's insane. Sorry, it's super cold. I'm all... <laughs> The only thing is the stars are, you know, a little bit misshapen because it is a camera lens. But, you know, I still want to see what it looks like, everything combined and all edited. And it's only when I zoom in, like, you would have to, like, to notice it, put your eyeball, like, on the screen, you know, and get it enlarged is when you uh, would really notice it. So I don't know if normal people would know the difference you know, just by looking at the photo. But everything seems to be doing good. I'm, I'm gonna have a full set of Hubble palette data to work with here pretty soon. All at about an hour each. But what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep shooting in um, 30 minute increments. So do HA, S2, and O3 until I just can't anymore tonight. I feel a little bit guilty too because you know it was my last video where I was trying to get more data on the Seagull Nebula and then I started this project or, or this experiment and I'm really enjoying this uh, and I, I just I just it really excited to see how it's going to turn out. That's if I so cold. Check this out. I totally broke my headlamp. Look at this. It's just flopping around out here. <laughs> I've had this headlamp for like 20 years and it finally bit the dust. It still lights up, but I just, it doesn't stay up. <laughs> well, guys, it's the end of the night and I actually have been wearing three shirts, a sweatshirt, and then this parka, and I'm still super cold. But I did manage to get an hour and a half in 03, an hour and a half of S2, and I got an additional 30 minutes in HA just to balance everything out. I can't wait to see how this all comes together, but right now I'm going to go home and then go to bed and try and get warm. It is super cold out here right now, so it looks like I got a plane um, flying into my shot. <laughs> of course. <laughs> All right. All right, before we get into it and I show you the picture that I got, 
With everything combined, let's talk a little bit about my setup. First off, I had full intention of using the ZWO 78mm camera ring, and I got it right here. As you can see, I, I didn't use it at all because with the ZWO dew heater for the camera attached, which I do use, it wouldn't fit around it. So I had to get really, really creative. What I ended up doing was borrowing a telescope ring from my Z73 and also the dovetail. And I took the handlebar from the Z73 and bolted it to the front so I could mount my guide scope to it. And then I had to print out, this is elaborate, oh my God. I had to print out a spacer ring, just a small spacer ring so that my camera with the dew heater cable attached would fit snug and secure. You know, that was the biggest thing because I don't want things, you know, falling off my mount in the middle of the night, but secure to the EQ6R. But I just want to let you know how that went for me. So if you have a ZWO dew heater, know that you're probably, that the ring probably won't fit around it. And the thing is, is you can unattach the cable. So it kind of, you can swing it forward instead of attaching it to the camera itself. But I don't like that because the dew heater, in my opinion, was, is, is kind of an afterthought, right? And it's not very durable. So the more you move it, the more chances you are of tearing it right off the camera. It's the only thing I don't like about my 183. So hopefully in the future, ZWO will come up with a, a dew heater solution that is mounted inside the camera, much like the QHYs. Let's talk a little bit about the counterweight situation. If you have an EQ6R Pro and you have a setup similar to this, you're probably not gonna be able to use the EQ6R counterweight that came with your mount because this setup is so lightweight, you're gonna to need to use lighter weights, <laughs> lighter weights to balance it out. And luckily I had the counterweight and the counterweight bar from my old Celestron CG2. I believe that this counterweight is around three pounds and it ended up balancing it out perfectly. It's, I was able to screw it in to the EQ6R counterweight bar. So I, it just, things just aligned, like it was just meant to be. I just, everything just came together. I had the part for it and it just turned out really well. But if you have an EQ6R Pro and you're, you're thinking about doing the same setup, know that you're probably gonna need to get a lighter counterweight than what comes with the EQ6R. Now that we got that out of the way, <laughs> I don't wanna turn this into a rant. Um, here's my photo, everything together. This is an hour and a half of HA. This is an hour and a half of S2 and an hour and a half of O3. One thing I noticed with all the channels is the O3 channel, especially the stars were very, very distorted in the O3 channel. What I ended up doing was making a starless version and then adding back the stars with the HA layer and also using the HA layer as a luminance. So I brought back a lot of the detail that was lost during the starless making process. The software I used to uh, make this photo starless was Star Exterminator. It's actually the first time I've used it. It's really, really cool. And I like the fact that it's a plugin into Photoshop, so I can just initiate it right from there. But uh, it did a really good job, and I really dig this photo. It, it was, uh, it, it's actually amazing to think that I got an hour and a half of in, in each filter, and I was able to expose this much. So imagine if I kept shooting it, you know, maybe you know four hours you know, for four more hours, you know, how much more I would have gotten or even even another hour on top of that. And I actually want to try the Rokinon 135 now. And I'm probably going to get that here in a few weeks. You know, it's, it's, it's an inexpensive lens. And I, I really want to try it because I really enjoy this 85. 
and maybe the 135 will give me a little bit tighter field of view. So I think it's worth getting and I'll probably make a video on that. Also, I think I'm going to make a video on the ZWO lens adapter, the short lens adapter for the filter wheel all by itself. So make sure you be on, be on the lookout for the... <sighs> make sure you're on the lookout for that, not this again. <laughs> and that's all I had for you today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and I guess I'll see you in the next. Peace.